in CME. The topic of CME is latest update in the management of overactive bladder or storage issue in LUTS. And uh, it's an honor to have uh, Dr. Praveer Vasu with us, consultant, senior urologist. And, uh, and uh, uh, the sir will take us through uh, the latest update and share his experience uh, as far as the topic is concerned. And if you have any query, you can put it in uh, the box. And after the end of the session, the sir will take, uh, take up your query. So with this, I would like to welcome you, sir and would like to hand over the session to you, sir. Namaste, namaste all. Thank you, Shuklaji, for the introduction. Uh, the crux of today's uh, presentation will be that I will be talking on a short presentation on the latest updates that will be to make you aware of what is the treatment of overactive bladder lice in today's scenario. And then we'll go to three case-based approaches because I believe that uh, this presentation, the purpose of today's presentation is to make it more interactive so that after you take a say, suppose you spend about half an hour, even if you spend half an hour, you must get at least some return in, in form of your practice pearls. So it's not that I'm being the best practitioner or I'm treating a lot lakhs of lakhs of patients, but I can tell you from my limited practice, what is my uh, 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 practice essentials and my experience so that we can all, we can all discuss and we can all uh, make out our own because there are lots of, you see, see the problem today in, at least in urology practice is that there are lots of guidelines. There are EAU guidelines, there are AUA guidelines, there are Indian guidelines. Now there are two, three Indian guidelines also. Previously, we didn't have an Indian guy that used to follow European and American guidelines. Now we have a two, three schools of Indian urology having their own guidelines. So it often makes it very difficult to formulate your own guidelines. So I believe that when you're seeing patients, you can't go back to your guideline notebooks or short uh, EAU pocket books. It's, you have to form your own own individualized approach how to deal with patients. And overactive blood, I, my, I, 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 you can very well understand, is this is a lot of patients with the with the booming of today's, uh, I can say, patient population and the age range and the life expectancy of the patient being increasing. Now, males and females alike are basically having a longer life expectancy. So patients are supposedly suffering from more of these problems and coming to you in larger groups. Previously, we don't didn't have, we just had unit, just obstructive symptoms due to prostate issues and we told him to take this alpha blockers or we go for surgery. But now you will see, you will see that the patient doesn't come with simple obstructive symptoms. They will come with six, seven LUTS symptoms. Okay. And then you will have some other issues like uh, cholesterol issues, obesity issues and all this fana fana exa. It comes with an exa. Huh? It comes with the, nowadays, you, uh, previously when you were doing uh, this, uh, our residency, we had to get short notes of metabolic syndrome. Now, each and every patient, I tell you what, almost each and every patient you see in your uh, up, uh, uptown clinics are suffering from this metabolic problems. They have, they have irritating bloods, they have obstructive bloods, they have cholesterol issues, they have, they have this um, uh, metabolic problems like hypertension, cardiac issues, on stents, on uh, aspirin, dual antiplatelets, having sexual issues. Also, very much... I mean, uh, they were very much uh, eager to have their sexual life. All these together coming in a, we can say a conundrum of uh, symptoms. So you can't, can't, you just can't uh, say you just can't treat one patient with one symptoms. Now we are one patient of valid symptoms. So it's very important that we have our own individualized approach at par with all modern guidelines. That is the purpose of me telling you in an interactive manner what you're going to do because see, we get patients over overactive pleasure day in day out and i believe that many of these patients uh, are not very satisfied with our treatment that's why he or she hops to your clinic the next day he or she hops to my clinic and he says dr a gave this medicine i'm not very happy he says, I've come to you because you are uh, that you that fana fana and I want to have your treatment. I gave him a treatment or her treatment. Again, she's unsatisfied, dissatisfied, and she hops into another clinic. So this this chakra goes on. So if we have a consolidated fixed protocols, individual protocol, and based on all these uh, these uh, uh, international national guidelines, it will be helpful helpful for us as a group. You see, we, we can 
tell them that this is your protocol this is the treatment we are offering you it may some take some time have patience and then we can go to the next form of treatment okay so that's the uh, thing and uh, the problem with this uh, session is i cannot take your chat as such as uh, mr shukla told you you have to put your questions in your chat box and then uh, mr shukla or mr bajaj will be discussing the question don't worry we will not be taking too much of your precious time so uh, i mean to say in your practice as i say you don't see prostatitism that we used to have in the past you see patients with a lower urinary tract symptoms as simple as that okay nowadays most patients comes with irritative bladder okay irritative bladder means patients come with urgency urge incontinence okay uh, nocturia nocturia is the, the people who can't sleep at night they tell you that doctor sir give me some alprazolam right alprazolam for one month for me i cannot sleep at night because i have to get up to pee every now and then when will i sleep so give me some sleep medicine so the person doesn't know that what is suffering from and is going around doctor shopping to get alprazolam or all these fancy sleep medicines okay so this is the very important we need to we need to teach our patients that bhai sahab aapko ye problem hai aapka prostate issue hai agar the prostate issue the to bleeding hota hai prostate mein to pisa band ho jayega mere ko to raat ko neend nahi aa raha that is the problem that is a problem first of all you need to keep your patients well acquainted with the symptomatology when the only when you say that your symptoms are due to this diagnosis don't worry and i am going to treat your symptoms per se okay then only then only we'll get a proper uh, i mean pro proper individual protocolized treatment and you get happy with the treatment because all these patients are never happy never happy as i say so what i tell you is when you get a patient suppose there's a prostate problem okay there's a prostate problem so he will have voiding lats he will have irritative lats so get up get a mnemonic in your mind is that voiding lats is p i s s while uh, irritative bladder is fun so it's basically fun to piss so irritative bladder is i said frequency urgency and nocturia okay uh doctor kundu whenever during patient treatment or facing problem overlap is it yeah yeah that that i'm coming doctor kundu i'm just coming to this uh what i mean to say is uh, so that's what i'm telling you that i'm telling you doctor shantan is that these patients have irritative lats and these patients have obstructive lats like precipitancy poor stream intermittent stream slow stream and strain to void all these are obstructive symptoms now what aua does you has brought a big aua symptomatic score ips questionnaire where they said that uh, three is maybe uh, most uh, half of the time four is more than half of the time five is 100% of the time Two point number two is about uh, say uh, uh, less than half of the time, and one is almost nil. So you make a mental map of what the patient is suffering from, and you can easily make your own estimation of an AUS score. If the patient is a mild symptom, say simple symptom that he has only to get up at night once, so that's not a nocturia. That's normal urine flow pattern in a night time, and sometimes he will have. some straining to void almost uh, say about two or thrice in a month so that makes him uh, having a patient with mild symptoms so these patients can be normally treated by diet and lifestyle alone what is diet and lifestyle the simple basis of avoid caffeine avoid alcoholic beverages avoid smoking and uh, take water in adequate amount you know don't need to take a jug full of amount when you get up all these elderly people now have this policy of getting up in the morning and trying to flush off the bowels with a jug full of water they believe by some some big man has said told them the problem with this is because they have prostate issues when they take a jug full of water in the morning sir lukewarm water to wash his bowels and to wash all his sins that he has accumulated in the previous night the problem what happens is he will have to go repeatedly to the loo to pass urine the simple simple tell him that don't go and just mug uh, lots of water in the morning that's a simple health tip you can tell your patients and mind you most of these patients have this problem of getting in the morning and taking a jug full of water you pour water with or uh, this nimbu pani or whatever in the morning to clean his body this is causing most of the this elderly individuals problems 
because of this prostatic issues okay simple lifestyle measures take control of your constipation because most of these people are constipated they hardly pass hard stools okay once or twice in a week they pass stools and all what they make them is their rectum gets irritated the blood is irritated the brain is irritated their whole family gets irritated okay so that's a problem take care of your bowels by simple laxatives and simple i mean fiber foods high fiber food all that they need to do is do these things bus done okay so simple simple things simple simple things can treat your patients okay now there are some over the counter herbal medicines like saw palmotor which was used to be uh, i mean acquired from the united states now they are available at all these local drug stores you can tell them but i don't think there is much scientific relevance to all these medicines okay so we'll come to this when 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 do you need to treat when do you need to treat a patient with overactive and irritable symptom I mean overactive bladder and a obstructive symptom both how do you treat as i say oab previously used to say wet oab and dry oab wet oab is the patient leaks that is urgency that is the irresistible sensation to hold the urine i have come from my hospital i just came in about 8:30 in the uh, just half an hour before i uh, checked in my computer and then what happened when i opened the door of my house i suddenly had this urge to urinate now i cannot stop my i was so well in my hospital so well in my car driving my car but whenever i come back home and try to unlock my door i have this sudden urge to urinate which i cannot hold for long if i can hold if i can wait open the door close the door go to my toilet go to my restroom empty myself that's fine i'm suffering from urgency now if i cannot hold and i leak my pants leak in my pants if, uh, while i'm getting inside my room i believe i suffer from urge incontinence when a person suffers from urge incontinence he has a wet oab and when a person suffers from urgency is a dry oab now as we see in our epidemiological studies males with prostate issues are more dry oab and women with postmenopausal women with this all this estrogen estrogen deficient atrophy of her uh, genital regions suffer from what is known as the wet oab wet oab can be that's different like it can be oab due to urgency or it can be due to stress urinary incontinence that is totally different ball game we are dealing with stress urinary incontinence okay so that's what i meant to say then i will come to the next slide as i said that all this anticholinergics previously we used because now as i said this is a changing scenario of our medical treatment medical practice because all oh, now we are getting as eld uh, elderly patients at 99 100 years walking jollyly into our opd uh, opd uh, i mean outpatient departments how can i can ever imagine this having uh, those who are practicing more, more than i mean more than 20 years now could you have ever imagine a 100 year old man coming to your outpatient department sitting in front of you never could have heard in japanese textbooks and japanese youtube videos because of a good life expectancy thank god we are having elderly individuals and because all these patients suffer from prostate issues suffer from obstructive symptoms in this elderly postmenopausally deficient 50 years postmenopausal ladies i mean postmenopausal 50 years all these individuals ladies they have an element of urgency in urge incontinence and we happily used to give him uh, or her antimuscarinic like tolterodine solifenes and all these things the problem this has been a recent study this has been quoted it says that there is increased risk of dementia because of this anticholinergic use and that's a very important issue in these elderly individuals okay leave alone dry mouth leave alone constipation leave alone this she come i have got patients who come that i cannot cry dr sap i have these issues happening in home but i cannot cry oh my god what is the problem with you what drug have you given me that i cannot cry yet my that this uh, this family functions no these are these are real issues you have to tackle in your normal day to day practice right so that is the role of that is how mira background helps that is why mira why is the mira background water drug i will say in the last 10 years last 10 years there has been not much improvement in urology other than lasers other than uh, robotics laparoscopy has been there they have been modified they have been using with four more advanced techniques in drug therapy yes botox has been there but how many of your patients can afford a botox injection okay but the wonder drug yes we had psilocybin 
molecule which is a much better in treating nocturia in elderly patients cardio selective that is patients with heart issues can be jollyly taking this psilocybin and this minopecron the minopecron is a new kid in the block but it has been there for about last 5 years okay but still many of us many of us i can tell you vouch many of us still try to give minopecron 25 mg feeling that 50 mg will cause problems that is not an issue minopecron is very safe see it doesn't have any cognitive defects it doesn't have such high incidence of dry mouth or constipation it will have some adverse like hypertension all these issues but okay fine they don't have this hypertension issues i mean i have seen in my practice in one or one in 50 will suffer from this problem otherwise most patients do very well with minopecron 50 mg the most important thing because it acts on a beta agonist pathway not on the anti muscarinic effect the bladder relaxation it has been done doesn't affect his bladder contractility okay doesn't happen if bladder contract so if you give a patient of as you said uh, as you said in the chat section ask me in the chat section what if i get a patient with a prostate problem with irritative flux he has a 50 g 60 g prostate with a 100 cc residual and he is suffering from obstructive symptoms and he is suffering from irritative symptoms and he says doctor saab you have to give me medicine you have to give me well with medicine or i will not come to you again now we we are we are normal mortals we cannot say okay i will i will cut your prostate the i don't have any i mean i don't have any option you have to give him option always we will lose our patient of course the patient lose the faith of our patient that's very important to this practice because one patient will tell doctor sahab ne pass gaye are 50 g 100 g is 100 cc residual the aur doctor sahab ne bola aapka prostate chalo hum kaat lete so this will create a sense of fear among your potential patients so give him the good option medical treatment only if they don't fail with medical treatment then they tell you then you come then they come to you then they tell i'll give you the best of my possibility the medical treatment the advanced medical treatment which i know of even after if you fail then have to give you the option of surgery okay then only the, then often the patients are very happy with that okay so that's what i said about mira begra the choice of mira begra is it does not cause retention in these patients of obstructive symptoms so if you have a patient of obstructive lux due to prostate or due to some postmenopausal urethral at atrophy okay in this elderly females and having 100 cc residual urine which is causing an irritating voiding symptoms urgency and urgent incontinence started with a combination of an alpha blocker and uh, this mirapegron it helps and the patient does not have any much incidence of dementia dry mouth xerostomia all this constipation issues and the most important thing he will not call you at the dead of the night that i have gone into acute retention come and put a catheter inside my belly that's a big issue i want to tell you okay so again oab as a this i this what i told you this an add on is minopecron as an add on to uh, tamsulosin as i said combine problem patient give him easy safe very well done and even mira background has been given as you say all this web scores gone down ips scores gone down the patients have a remarkable quality of life improvement in quality of life that is what we are talking qol the patient is happy with the medicine okay and then we have a uh, few articles just about the refractory oap refractory oap before you start botox botox is a good medicine but i have very little personal experience of giving botox to my patients because most of these are uh, very costly medicines and they have to come on on regular basis even one treatment of botox is not sufficient you have to call her to come back again for the next session So often these patients are lost to follow the doctor. Sir, ne kya kya dawai likh rahe hain. Ham to bade doctor sir ke paas jayenge. Ab we'll take multiple doses. So it happens with me. Uh, I I don't want to mince my own words, but it happens often to me. So you give a patient Botox, he's either very happy for one to two months, then he comes back. Doctor sir, itna kancha kya aur fir se mera ye problem lot hai. So what will I do? The next thing is you then tell them that there are some fancy fancy surgical. or uh, uh, neo surgical options like interstim devices or tens and all the sacral neuro modulation which i don't have no 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 personal experience just had some short notes in my exams of 10 15 years ago so 
and the patient never understands so only if it goes to very higher centers then they will be very appraised of all this high fi- high frequency medical tre- surgical treatments so ultimately i want to tell you is these patients have two options so in these cases you have started them on mera or him or her or mera background then you add an anti muscarinic and see how it happens that you start in 50 mg mera background some people are saying go to 100 mg mera background we don't have very scientific evidence for this i tell you please don't take it from my hearsay because there is no scientific evidence of giving 100 mg mera background i give you 50 mg mera background the patient doesn't do on the long term there is some amount of uh, you can say the patient gets used to the medicine then he add on uh, solifenacin or any, any form of anti muscarinic to that drug okay so this patient does well because all this botox or ultimately botox fails ultimately goes to intestinal devices nobody knows any idea of intestinal intestinal devices then you have to go this short small bladders non compliant bladders all this uh, augmentation system plus the and his life becomes a hell okay so that's a problem take first of all very important as i i will go into a case based approach then i will tell you is is uh, is pelvic muscle for training so when you get a patient of overactive lungs make it sure he is not constipated make it sure he is off caffeine off alcohol off smoking maintaining a normal body habits avoiding obesity doing a lot of doing normal physical exercises and then all these anti stress maneuvers are doing some yoga yoga sab sab log karte hain abhi yoga yoga bol do ab apko thoda yoga yoga meditation all this uh, mindfulness or all, all this prana pranam kijiye it's good for your relaxation and also pelvic floor relaxation the most important thing my dear friends i will tell you is pelvic muscle floor training okay pelvic floor muscle training is the first treatment of a patient coming with uh, oap the overactive bladder because we give him ample time for his bladder to get accustomed to get optimized when you charge him with mira background later okay pelvic muscle floor training is very very simple very simple that is i will just come to this let me see what are the things that we are left with in this presentation so this is basically a postmenopausal i was telling you don't ever neglect a postmenopausal patient who has come to you woman come to you with symptom of leaking of urine okay she may be suffering from uh, stress incontinence she may be suffering from this uh, urgency incontinence a lot of treatments you give her estrogen therapy all localized estrogen creams then you give up pelvic muscle floor training the two form of pelvic muscle floor training pelvic muscle floor training was in fact initially uh, he was uh, promulgated by this gynecologist called uh, um, kegel kegel is a famous gynecologist he did all this all this fancy type of investigations putting his hand in the vagina putting some blood pressure cuff and measuring the pressure and all these things but he was very good it, it was his actually his great goes to him that he promulgated this pelvic muscle floor training there are two form of pelvic muscle floor training one for the stress incontinence one for the urgent cons i'm going to tell you when i talk about the cases that in fact revolutionized it oab treatment kegel exercise primary revolution of oab treatment second comes mira background now these things are totally changed the dynamics so in fact if you initially get a patient given all uh, all this multi muscarinics and they will just shoot out they will dry mouth and all this constipation and everything can't can't uh, cough well can't uh, cry well and they will go off okay so that's it never neglect uh, because try to understand what is her problem is she suffering from stress urinary incontinence that's very common in the age group or suffering from urinary incontinence and miniature sling surgery is always for the stress incontinence people okay some big exercise all these anti mass muscarinic mira bagel doesn't help sui needs sling surgery in the long term okay so this is the basically the key highlights i want to talk to you and then i want to uh, let me uh, stop my share and start the next press uh, presentation if you have any question i'm ready to take the question or i go with the flow okay go with the flow Right. Yes. So these are the few case scenarios in overactive bladder. So make it very uh, interesting. Okay, so this one chat section. Okay. Now, Mr. Bajaj, uh, don't have any. Two. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this is a seventy-year-old uh, elderly woman. It's very common. Two-year history of worsening urgency. 
and uh, urge incontinence. So she has a weight weight. Fine, simple. Okay, these are the few things uh, in the history. Okay, now physical exam is seen that there is no stress incontinence. Okay, and you first give him or first give her the option of dietary and lifestyle measures as I told you. Then you tell him, tell her. I'm sorry, tell her to do some uh, pelvic muscle flow training. Now the pelvic muscle flow training, as I said, there are two types of pelvic muscle flow training. As Kegel has promulgated, the one is for her is the PFMT or for urgency and urgent incontinence or the tissue overactivity, which is the diagnosis or uh, urodynamic study. Okay. Now what will you say to this patient? This patient, you have to tell her, tell her that. Madam G, you are in control of your bladder and don't let the bladder be in control of your life or your life will be in total mess. Okay. That is whenever you feel that urge because these patients now will have this sixth sense and, and a very high level of intuition that now she is going to have this urge. I mean, urge and urge incontinence episode. They have this problem because I've seen patients telling me that Dr. Saab, I'm very happy when I'm watching this all these uh, soaps on my TV. And then when I go to the loo, I said, I have this sensation of that I need to go to the loo. That the loo is basically, the toilet is basically very attached to my bedroom when I watch my TV. Just when I go near my bathroom, before I cross my precipice, okay, that the choke cart, then I have a sudden urge and I leak. It happens every day. What can I do? Very simple, very common, very simple. These patients can know when she will be trigger, have this trigger of an urge in continuous episode. Tell her whenever you have this thought that I'm going to have this urge in continuous episode right now in a few seconds, these patients have, do have this intuition. Stand and sit on a chair. Okay, sit upright like what I'm sitting right now. I'm not sitting upright actually. Let's sit upright right now. And take in a deep breath. Try to squeeze your rectal sphincter because you don't have any voluntary control over your rectal sphincter in quick flex fashion. It's called a quick flex fashion. That is what happens when a person suffering from stress and incontinence. What do you tell her? You tell her, Madam Ji, up batho, up saas lo, count one, two, three, and synchronously you contract your rectal sphincter one, two, three, four, five. Hold it while you hold your breath. And then you exhale out one, two, three, four, five, and also rectal sphincter ka thura thura waise hi relax karo. Synchronize your rectal sphincter contraction with your breath work. Simple thing. Because you are doing this over a period of time, slowly, slowly contracting, holding it for some time, and then relaxing by a normal biofeedback mechanism. You say biofeed, don't go into all this uh, peripheral nerves and all this thing, the patient will get bugged off. Your urethral sphincter, the muscles over there, the pelvic flow will also get strengthened. Okay. And normally you do all these lower lower pelvic exercises, yoga, biyam, and they are just additory additions to your what you are doing to this Kegel exercise. But over here, what you are doing, because by recent evidence, they have been shown that it's a lot of micro motions happen in an overactive bladder. It's, it's like a spark, small, small sparks happening. Uh, at 6 o'clock, at 10 o'clock, at 11 o'clock, at 5 o'clock, then they merge together. So whenever this micro motions abnormality happening, then the patient can sense. The patient has this sensing that they are active in the capsaicin receptive receptors and all these things, painful receptors. Now they will have this urgency, pain, bladder urgency. You know what is painful bladder syndrome? They have urgency with pain. Okay, patients suffering from interstitial systems, most of these people. Painful bladder syndrome. Mm, people have chronic prostatitis. They have this painful bladder syndrome. Small, small micro motions all get in, uh, all get together, uh, activated with activation of capsizing sensitive receptors. They will have urgency. They will have pain. Now, if you go for a quick flex of your rectal sphincter by a nor another feedback mechanism, this will actually give a negative feedback to this micro motions. That's a micro motions theory. A detailed aspect you can see in the latest edition of Campbell Urology. Okay. So this will inhibit this micro motions and immediately the this this detrus or overactive activity which has been generating will pass off. 
for a bad low don't get up immediately take some time quick fix relax get up sit again if you feel and then go to toilet you're not telling her to avoid urination again that will be our reverse effect on her whole bladder psychology physiology and all these things all this low chance so you tell her just do this pelvic exercises which is called a pelvic muscle flow training quick flexes just to let that that overactive sensation to develop into a major overactivity causing a leak it goes off take control of your bladder it goes off it slowly 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 this overactive symptom will go if it doesn't go off no benefit after some time it have no benefit then you go to your medical in this scenario she was started on uh, oxybutynin i really find any use of oxybutynin nowadays except this young 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 kids young kids do very well with this oxybutynin okay then they tried tolterodin failed ultimately went to have a mirabegal did very well with mirabegal okay simple case scenario still have to go for first weight loss habits all these good habits uh, diet i'll then go to pelvic muscle flow training simple issues i tell you just make it sure she's not constipated make it sure she fails to go to the urine after the she controls her contraction because in that case it will the urine will go on uh, building up just to, the purpose of this pfmt is just cut off this source of generation of this micro motions in your bladder detrus that's all that's all after that you give a mira background if the mira background doesn't help you go and give a add on treatment with uh, uh, solifenacin uh, and uh, she does very well that will happens after 2 to 3 years of giving her a mira background okay and after uh, with that symptomatic treatment also goes so now we have a patient gynecological department all the patients ends up in gynecological departments i don't know for what reason and then they are referred back to us so what happened in this patient is that uh, there was no prolapse there was no sui there was nothing no problem in bladder no obstruction and there's a there's a role of doing urodynamic study in these cases and they didn't show you see the maximum detrusor pressure was way beyond 45 as there is no form of obstruction obviously someone did a cystoscopy this is obviously will be normal now very important thing is whenever you feel that the patients have a, a bladder pain syndrome because one thing is very important in the patient with a refractory oab is often patients harbor a carcinoma in situ so always keep this in mind and somebody says why have you done cystoscopy in these cases somebody charges you then you can always say that these are refractory cases okay and i want to i want to rule out a very important diagnosis because she has a history of taking kyne and she had a history of uh, some irritative bladder so long for a long time one or two episodes of hematuria i just better do a cystoscopy to rule out a carcinoma in situ because they were not well picked up by normal ultrasounds or normal ct scan sir okay so that's the that's the reason of doing a ct cystoscopy in these refractory cases and uh, then obviously you did a urine culture and all this in i just missed out on the urine culture routine examination always i need to check that she is not suffering from any uti in this all this thing uh, treatment of this normal dietary and health issues make it sure she doesn't suffer or he doesn't suffer from a urinary tract infection so that's one important thing and then again somebody started on on the oxybutynin i don't know why oxybutynin failed but she was not put on mira background she was directly sent for tens okay all this uh, uh, all this electric stimulation of a positive tibial nerve and all this i don't have any because uh, these are given the slides like that's why i'm discussing with you don't have any uh, personal experience with it i i think 99% of urologists does not have any personal experience we all read it in our campbell textbooks we all used to write this we also it hota hai na wo ragad dete hai for our exams and then we all forget okay but there are centers in south india they are doing good tens and good industrial devices uh, this this is the pictures taken though this is a western patient as you can see in the skin color but we do have south indian centers i just forgot the name of the center they doing good good uh, studies on this interesting device cycle neuromodulation but we are not doing this in at least uh, i don't have any any idea somebody doing this in our eastern part of our country okay at least in west bengal i have i have no personal experience of somebody doing it so cycle neuromodulation started neuromodulation or did all these things all this, because this is a two step maneuver first like a pace you put a pace and see everything is happening and then you put the original device so uh, and then again after year they show a good good response okay? luckily they had a good response so 
the thing is i want to tell you is that why go into such detailed uh, treatment and all this fancy stuff in the first go i think if you are uh, okay with the diet and uh, physical exercises then if she's not okay then go go, go give her mirror background that is that must be a treatment protocol give her mirror background do a urodynamic and you have seen that the person doesn't have any obstruction only to give her an alpha blocker and the person have any no other secondary issues all the all the things are normal so uti there is no uti put her on mirror background long term and it doesn't happen after two three years you can put him on a this thing i add on anti muscle and after some time most of the patients settle down with time okay the, now the patients require botox and other patient require all this fancy stuff so this is a very important question this is the finish of today's presentation and the normal presentation you get normal case scenario you get in all your patients so you have a patient with a low flow rate and a post void residual of 60 with a prostate volume of 65 cc normal psa now the often is say that i often have this problem i never tell you one important thing in these patients in these patients do a yearly psa okay do a yearly psa because the now the somebody will come and tell you why have you done a yearly psa in this job why you do a psa every 6 months when the patient turns up into clinic okay because we know psa is less than 4 my dear my dear fellow so he is not having malignancy is not having malignancy dr is normal why are you saying that the problem is i tell you what problem is these patients na 65 grams prostate with all this obstructive urine they will tell you dr sab you give me medicine okay but i don't want to have any surgery you can tell him now that your psa is 1.4 and on serial examination when you come to my clinic it's actually increasing but less than 4 1.4 se do hua to dhai hua that means you basically is a candidate for surgery If less than 1.4 remains like one less than 1.4 fine you can continue with the medical treatment this is one of the pointers that he will request surgery long term i am say this is a d pointer but one of the pointer why i do psa examination examination in every 6 month the patient turns back right okay then obviously there are the four year progressive history obviously he is a candidate for surgery but he wants to tell give me medical treatment first so we started because of 65 gram that we started him on alpha blocker because he had some cardiac issues we put him on silodosin and dutasteride and we had a symptom improvement but because he had irritative symptoms uh we put him on this oa because he had oa oab symptoms he well tolerated with mirabegron started the mirabegron because he was not doing very well with mirabegron after some time we added a solifenacin make him sure that we are giving mirabegron 50 mg but we are adding in a 5 mg solifenacin also to increase the uh, increase the uh, this uh, patient compliance and also patient's efficacy of this uh, control of over activity but me uh, solifenacin 5 mg as such doesn't cause retention but give him 10 mg this patient go into retention okay so this is all the question this is all the clinical scenario i wanted to tell you and if you have any question we'll take the question or else so where is the chat section in this zoom link i always forget the chat section i don't have any urodynamic study facility in interior then how can we judge problem bp or oab during regular practice simple i don't have to have urodynamic i don't also have urodynamics in my setup i hardly do any urodynamics only in the zero cases diabetic patients where you have 20 g prostate and severe obstructive lux then only i see the whether it's having a neurologic problem as a primary focus or the it has any obstruction issue i don't have any only if you are dealing with neurogenic patients on a uh, on a scale high scale then you have to have the zero dynamic studies don't go just simple simple history taking physical examination and i tell you one thing there is something called eyeball urodynamics you can do this cystoscopy and i put in a catheter see but i don't do them this is given in the textbooks but i really don't do them so i don't think there is much relevance of urodynamics only when you do with neurogenic patients patients post cva whom do you think you have to give him a uh, option of surgery patients of parkinsonism disease or long term anti parkinsonism treatment and all these young young kids of neurogenic problems only then you think about your dynamic don't think about your dynamic simple history taking when do we decide yes 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 the thing is it comes in see the problem is we get patients often in a very complicated manner because most of these patients come to the primary care physician before the primary care physician i will want to say that most of us normal layman people non medical people don't get proper awareness that we are suffering from this problem that is the main issue i want to tell you okay 
only when we feel we are suffering from a problem then we go to a doctor and that time the primary care physician says that aapko to ye 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 bimari ho gaya hai so basically you are in a compli- complication of the complication dar gaya aur fir sab nahi gaye so the, the person will send me to a refer me to a urologist will cut my post the problem is the, for a normal general person you must be aware what your problem are and as a primary care physician it's my duty to tell you when you come and aapko ye ye bimari hai you suffering from all these problems and uh, these are the primary treatments we're going to give you because you have come in late that's why because you're having complications complications can be in the variety of forms like infection can be in the form of you do a creatinine measurement as a part of your normal practice creatinine is high you do an ultrasound you see the bilateral hyponephrosis occurred or unilateral hyponephrosis has happened or the patient is having stones in the prost in the bladder in the kidneys or the patient is having any symptoms of hematuria blood in the urine because any blood in the urine it's better to better it's always better to refer to a urologist okay all the refractory problems huh? you give him uh, alpha blockers first you give him metapegron you start him on this second line uh, solifenacid but still the patient is having refractory symptoms then it seems that you're missing something in all this bladder pain symptoms whenever the patient has pain with obstru- with uh, this uh, irritative uh, all this uh, urgency issues then be aware that you are dealing with some other issues that needs a uh, referral to your urologist thus combination always no no, no the thing is yes okay i i i can understand i can understand i can understand there is a question uh, is does combination therapy of psilocybin and solifenacin is effective than tamsulosin and solifenacin you're talking about uh, psilocybin and solifenacin they about mira bag okay fine now the problem is not is 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 not because of the combination therapy the problem lies in the psilocybin the, the the normal alpha blocker molecule okay psilocybin versus tamsulosin it's not psilocybin versus solifenacin versus uh, tamsulosin and solifenacin psilocybin versus tamsulosin take a one proper day to discuss all these issues i believe i believe i it's my personal experience practical experience is that i find all these patients are suffering from this cardiac stents cardiac issues because most of the patients na 70 80% of patients will be on dual antiplatelets on anti aspirin he may be taking aspirin doesn't know that he's taking aspirin he may not having any problem but some cardiologist did given him so that means what is that you see echocardiography echocardiography shows a vascular dysfunction so it's like some cardiac issues for of an hours all, all around these patients psilocybin is a much better medicine as an alpha blocker than tamsulosin but beware one thing i have given psilocybin to a 40 year old gentleman or 50 year old gentleman thinking that he will do bet good with him and the dead of the night i was given the, the highest level of expertise i could hire on a on a telephone because the person itself was having the highest number of expertise from his wife because he is unable to ejaculate so the problem with young patients or sexually you can't say young sexually active patients just tell him bhai sahab aapko this is a given it is a very good medicine but it will cause some amount of retrograde ejaculation so be aware of this when you go and have fun with your partner tell her tell her that i may not be able to ejaculate in the right proper time because i am on a medicine only if you will make her counseling accordingly then they will not going to bother you in the future now the next is frequent even urgent urinary urination flow rate peaking 53 ml per second average flow rate yes 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 this is known as a super voider status somebody who have a qmax of 53 ml then you do a uroflowmetry graph and then that basically the calf shoots out of the graph the calf shoots out and comes back later into calf again so you have a one curve out then you have nothing then the curve comes back comes back so it shows that the patient is super void super void means the bladder is basically contracting like l so obviously these are these are patients of uh, overactive bladder but again i want to tell you one very simple tip i have found in my practice because my now urologists all of us uh, carry our own urologists like our uh, own uh, tiffin boxes with us on our outpatient clinics and all the district clinics we have found that patients often make it a habit of somehow uh, creating this artifact by gently uh, peddling that sensor i don't know what fun they get one but one they derive so this will create an artifact like you know the supervisor status so be aware of this 
what is the role of pulmonary and cardiovascular examination of diagnosis of OAB? Every person can have a chest symptom and a heart symptom. So, I mean, you need to, I mean, that's that's very this pertinent in your normal examination to see whether it's suffering from COPD and whether, whether it's suffering from the problem. What really happens, I tell you, was well, all these patients have nocturia. These patients will come with nocturia, but they have nocturnal polyuria. And the most important cause of this nocturnal polyuria obstructive sleep apnea. And some of them are related with your cardiac status and all this uh, obesity and all these pulmonary symptoms and all these uh, pink faces and all this. You have to hear this in the in our normal uh, college days. Okay, pink puffy faces. So all these elderly gentlemen, fatty fellows like me, chubby cheeks, pink pink cheeks, uh, and all these bull necks and all these things. Uh, always having this uh, in uh, taking deep breaths, uh, uh, labored breathing. They will be suffering from obstructive sleep apnea. They will be having this nocturnal polyuria. So whether you treat nocturnal polyuria or nocturia, then becomes a big diagnostic dilemma. So think of it when you treat these patients. Role of obstructions on the systems of OAB. What is the role of obstruction on the systems of OAB? I can't get the question. I mean, obviously, obstruction can cause uh, irritative blood. That's, that's, that's as simple as that. Or the irritative blood can happen without obstruction. So it can be with due to blood, due to an obstruction. Or maybe simply associated with obstruction. It's not a cause of this obstruction. How long will minabagrin can be given? Oh, it can be given for how long the patient needs a treatment. That's very simple. It's a very, very, very good drug. Very safe drug. I said only a few, I mean, a few uh, stories of hypertension, refractory hypertension have come across, but never happened to my own patient practice. Very good. My VCP is a wonder drug. Uh, minabagrin is a wonder drug. But given 50 milligram, that's a, that's a normal dose. And uh, if you want to dose to de-escalate the treatment slowly, there are some people who says give him for your heart for 25 milligrams then stop the dose. That's a very rational way of stopping the treatment. How important of infimiloby along with medication? Let me tell you another thing: bladder training. You can save the lives of these unhappy people simply by teaching her the normal bladder training method. I told you, normal PFMT. This is nothing to do with the uh, Kegel uh, exercises for stress unit importance. Simple exercises in the modern um, uh, treatment based, modern, I mean, bladder training based on these modern concepts. Simple thing, you can just prolong her life without medicines. Ultimately, she will go on medicines, fine. But prolong her life without medicines, make her bladder optimized for medicines to be taken later on. Okay. Children, because I can have four or five patients, uh, uh, Mira background can we give to children? I don't have any, I, I don't give Mira background to children. And I, I think there is some of the level contraindication to give Mira background to children. I don't really not, uh, I don't know, but I, I'm very happy with 2.5 milligram. I mean, that uh, oxygen 5 milligram to children. Uh, they do very well, but I do no, I mean, Kids, I mean, if, even to say kids, 12 years above, you can give 25 milligrams, but kids, I have no role. I don't give, actually. They do very well with oxybidin. I think the only use of oxybidin today is all these kids, sir, with uh, daytime margins in body and services. Con take his, con 90 percent of them will be constipated. They will be binging all this, uh, all these things, uh, all these chocolates and all these chips and all this, and uh, take control of it. Uh, elderly, I have tell you that, that that recent study I told you, tolterol does cause some dementic problems, and the biggest issue is elderly patients will have an element of obstruction. They will so, suddenly they will go uh, just like that. They will go into a uh, uh, retention and will call, and the, and the relatives will call you later at the night and what medicine have you given my grandfather's gone into retention. So better to be on the safe side today, even on our mira background. Yes, I told you tolterol used to give. In elderly patients, but better my my practical experience is better give him or her mira background. Only if he's suffering from some labile hypertension stuff, you can jolly give mira background to these patients. They, they don't have any this neurologic symptoms and they don't, don't have any. Uh, the, there's some role of diaphanous in all these neurologic impaired patients, but mira background is safe. Uh, that what I tell you, don't give for faster relief. Start with Mira. There's a question like Mira background or alternative. Can we give together for faster relief? No. No, my friends, start with Mira background as a single modality. Then only when after two years, one and a half years, then only when you see that the patient is not no longer responding 
to to alternate it uh, to mira background then give an add on to alternate it just don't give it right like that because ultimately the patient complies because after one or two years uh, you will be uh, you will be i mean uh we have no options we're running out of options so you have to keep your options also with this time then you deescalate that then you stop to alternate then you continue mira background 50 then after some again mira background 20 we just deescalate the treatment for some time and then the patient is very happy in this case so no faster relief no fast relief for uh, uh, for over a kick go slow go slow be patient tell the uh, patient to be patient and i mean the treatment is fine so i think is we are done we are all of some time thank you for all for your lovely interaction i hope to come back again with more such uh, if you find this to be of useful next to your practice so we will be back again so uh, till then i think it's time for to sign off and stay safe and we will meet again bye bye thank you sir. uh sir first of all i would like to thank you sir for presenting such a beautiful interactive session sir and more of a uh, i would like to say that ki is a practical base and you share lots of your own experience a clinic clinic clinical experience which matters a lot for the doctor sir as a audience sir who have listened to you for the last one hour sir so i'm sure that uh, they will get ben- benefit out of it sir and sir on behalf of uh, our entire team sir i would like to thank you once again and the entire audience also sir for uh, for uh, sparing their uh, important time sir from the busy uh, time frame sir so uh, once again would like to thank you from cipla urology team to sir silofast team and sir as uh, due to sir pan- pandemic is there sir so we are not able to do a uh, uh, physical sir one to one meeting is not happening sir so this okay. is the way oh, sir uh, yeah sir so this is the way we have uh, to uh, interact and share uh, your experience sir so uh, in future also sir we will love to do such kind of program sir and uh, uh, so would like to uh, request you sir uh, to kindly spare uh, one uh, sir another one day so that we could uh, have uh, done such kind of program in future also sir yeah yeah we will do and just a short promotion from my side because if you allow me i just uh, give yeah. me the link of my uh, website so uh, in fact we have many people who are no, who are uh, 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 i mean people who have people who have friends who really don't have any uh, 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 any knowledge of what is overactive bladder like what is the prostate issue like what is men's health like so you can this is my link i have shared it with the chat section so you can click one click to this link you will go to the website and we will have a library section lab is we have, have a lot of courses for this generalized gen, general population i do have courses for medical students but i have also online courses for general population to get well aware that's very important awareness has to be increased in our normal population so so be uh, free to check my website and uh, interact with me anytime thank you now, sir thank you sir thank you sir it really helps sir because nowadays sir uh, getting a right knowledge it with a challenge sir because uh, sir in the era of google sir we have lots of knowledge sir but uh, which leads to more confusion sir rather so if a knowledge will come from a spot like you sir it will surely going to help thank you sir thanks for thank doing you. that thank you thank you very much thank you good night sure